Exactly. Making research, uh, which is uh, the, the first part of publishing, you know, because uh, mm -hmm. everything starts from planning a study and, uh, and obtaining data and whatsoever. It's 50% a, a of my actual task. And I, I enjoy so much of doing this, uh, and it is something that it doesn't really uh, cost me too much. So I, I like to do it because uh, it is something that I've uh, I've expected to do when I was young, and mm -hmm. I, I will do it for the rest of my life, hopefully, if we will come healthy in the, in the forthcoming future. So doing research, publishing, it's, publishing is just the, uh, the tip of the iceberg of uh, something that has to do with laboratory medicine, and it is, it's my first hobby uh, in the lab and even outside the laboratory. I mean, it's a very competitive world, mm -hmm. so I know that uh, becoming a good scientist is not so easy uh, mm -hmm. at this point uh, of time. But I, I, I do believe that what the young scientists need to know, starting from the beginning, is that they need to do high, high quality research. This is the first thing, because I mean, you, you must really follow uh, the storm of publishing, because that is the hopeful part of our career. You have to start with making good research and then everything will come afterwards. And you have to start with something simple, very simple, because you, you can really jump on a very multifaceted or complex pathology uh, mm -hmm. immediately from the beginning of your career, but you have to start with something very simple and you will have many, many failures in your career. Everybody of us has uh, have had so many failures in our career, and, but you must be discouraged by that. You have the strength to keep on doing what you do because if you really like it, uh, as I like, and if you really trust in what you are doing, then you will succeed. Yes. It, is, it is not a written law, but absolutely, I'm absolutely certain that if you trust in what you are doing, you will succeed. It's encouraging. Have you ever experienced any upsets or any, any setbacks or challenges so many. in public? Would you <laughs> so like to share with some so of them? I mean, maybe, near field? maybe the early days with uh, no, Professor Plevenin. Uh, yeah. There have been so many failures. I mean, when you, when you try to publish your first article, 90% mm -hmm. uh, it will be rejected. <laughs> but you, you, you how, how, how do you cope with it? How, how do you cope with it? Were you upset? Or Absolutely, you are. Because <laughs> especially when you are young, you are, uh, you are not very uh, keen on, on being uh, judged by, by, by the mm -hmm. others. Then yes. when you get older, then yes. you know that this is a part of your life, a part of your career, uh, and etc. So I, I was really complaining when my first article was, was rejected, really, because I thought that I, I was the, the best in the world, as probably every young, uh, young boy is when write his first article and make his first research. But you must not be discouraged by that. Yes. And you have, I mean, as I said before, if you trust in what you are doing, you will overcome all the challenges. Yeah. There are many challenges. Uh, um, uh, you, nobody of us uh, has started in the same position as we are now. Everything must be learned mm -hmm. day by day, making errors, because only if you make error, then you understand not to make, it them, not to make them any longer. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a long career. but. As I said before, if you trust in what you are doing, you, you, will, you will do it. Uh, there are many issues about uh, deciding whether or not the paper is suitable for a journal. The first one is that uh, the paper um, should, should have some translational consequence. I mean, uh, it must be in our, um, in our field, which is pretty much laboratory medicine, traditional medicine sector, we don't want to publish something that remains there just for publishing it. But we want to publish something that has some sort of outcome, then in the future of our profession, for improving diagnosis, for improving the outcome of the patient whatsoever. So the first issue that you have to look at is that this paper must have something, uh, some real consequences mm -hmm. in the future. And this is the first part of the joke of the of the game. Then, obviously, the second part of the game is the quality of the paper. Uh, you have to publish uh, um, a paper that fulfills all the current quality ref uh, requirements, uh, the starts guidelines or um, whatever kind of guidelines that you use for the paper that you are publishing. And you have to follow them because, if, you, if for instance, if you are not using the appropriate statistical analysis, then all the results are flawed. 
if you don't publish uh, the real data, but you publish something that is not that is different from what you have obtained, and it is, that, that is not a high quality paper, it, that is a fake paper. So you have to, first of all, you have to make the paper that is really useful for the readers, mm -hmm. that is comprehensible to the, to the people that read the, the, yeah. the article. And you also uh, must think that that paper is written by, for instance, under translational medicine for potentially 100,000 people. And they are not all familiar with the topics that you are dealing with. So you have to make a good introduction, you have to make a good presentation of your data with a solid statistical analysis and a good discussion that may, must be accessible to everybody that mm -hmm. wants to read the, the journal. Well, uh, it's very difficult to, to tell you my priorities because I like everything I do. Mm -hmm. I like solve the problem in my two labs in Verona, I like to read a new paper, I, I like to make a new research, I like to teach because mm -hmm. I'm, all, of course, I'm a university professor, so I like to teach. I mean, there is, I, I like this profession when mm -hmm. I was uh, uh, very, very young and there is not really uh, the best part of my, uh, of my career that I like most than, than the other. I would say that probably the, the part that I like, uh, I like most is making research. Making research. Uh, yeah, starting a new study and doing something that, as I said before, is useful for the scientific community or for clinical medicine. When I wake up early in the morning, the first issue that I, um, that I ask myself, uh, looking at the mirror when I brush my teeth, is uh, what will you do today for the health of your patient? That, that is my, uh, my guiding idea of, uh, of my career. So what's your next goal for your research? Well, we have several, <laughs> several things going on. We are working on epigenetics. We are, mm -hmm. more, we are working on uh, biomarkers for cancer prevention and mm -hmm. uh, cancer, uh, cancer therapy. And we are also actively working on frailty, mm -hmm. uh, which means predicting whether or not an older patient will become a problem for, for himself or for herself. For, his family or her family, especially for the healthcare system, because when an old person became frail, then we have a huge problem for the clinical assistant to that person, and, and uh, we have to put a large amount of money to, to treat these patients. So that we are we have recently received uh, 50.6 million euros of funding from the European Community to work on this field. And we are very, very committed to work on this field because we think that probably with the age of the population, this problem will, will become worse and worse in the next future. We have many, com many international commission collaboration already ongoing mm -hmm. and we are working, as I said, on a, the European level, uh, mm -hmm. both on Freighty and uh, also with the uh, European Federation of Laboratory Medicine Working Group on Pre-Analytical Variability. We have a mm -hmm. huge group working on uh, quality of laboratory testing. Then we have many collaborations with Australia. We are working with mm -hmm. the Australian Institute of Sports on, um, let's say, sport physiology and sport, uh, sport medicine. Mm -hmm. And then we have other collaboration with Australia and in the US on uh, cardiovascular medicine. What about China? Have you ever no, I actually I don't have any kind of collaboration with China apart from uh, analog of maybe in the future. medicine. Maybe in the future, of course, but I was <laughs> never contacted by anybody from China. Probably, you know, the distance is also a problem because if you yes. want to collaborate on a European level, it's just two hours flight. If you want to collaborate with China, it's 14 hours flight, so it becomes a big, a, a big problem for the distance. But obviously, I would be delighted to have any kind of collaboration with Chinese guy. And, making research about. Uh, I mean, I know that uh, probably uh, we have two, two very different uh, settings because uh, yes. Caucasian yeah. and Chinese are very different. So many, many studies that we have done on, on the European level probably mm -hmm. can be translated yeah. into, the China's, uh, into the China population because mm -hmm. probably, I mean, genetics is not an opinion, so we are different from many issues yeah. and maybe something that works for Caucasian doesn't work for Chinese and yeah. etc. So probably there is a very good perspective to, to also improve the health in China. Uh, from what we have been doing uh, in the Europe in the past in the past years, that would be even though you are, I know that your scientific arena is growing so fastly and so 
and, and so good that uh, you will probably in a few years overcome completely Europe in terms of scientific production and quality of, of what you do. Well, That's a typical I question don't want for to you. Think about it. <laughs> I will retire in 22 years, and the last thing that I, I that comes into my be doing afterwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I like too much what I'm doing that yeah. I don't want to think about uh, what will be the future. Yes. Uh, I don't know if the next question is is uh, which will be the future of laboratory medicine. I don't have the crystal ball. I see. So what uh, what I've written 10 years ago, uh, only half of what I've written 10 years ago, then get into reality 10 years afterwards. For instance, we were thinking about uh, 10 years ago that laboratory, clinical laboratories will be no longer existing because they, we were thinking about uh, in vivo testing. Already some sort of device uh, being developed to make in vivo testing without obtaining blood collection. I've never seen one of these working. I've never seen one of these uh, being purchased by whatever kind of hospital in, in, in whatever part of the world. So, you know, there are some, some things that you say, okay, we are going in this direction, then it doesn't seem to realize. Thank you very much for sharing your You're insights. Welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, we look forward to more of your yeah, researches, outcomes in your future. It will be a pleasure.